Down in the dining room with the shiny Romanian furniture the Abramos had imported from their Moscow apartment, the table was laid out in the hospitable Russian manner with everything from four different kinds of salami to a plate of chewy tongue to every little fish that had ever inhabited the Baltic Sea, <laughs> not to mention the sacred little dash of black caviar. Eunice sat, Queen Esther-like, in her orthodox getup, at the ceremonial end of the table upon a fluffed-up Passover pillow, frowning at the, attention, at the attention, unsure of how to deal with the strange currents of love and its opposite that circulated in the fish-smelling air. My father proposed a seasonal toast in English. To the creator who created America, land of free, and who now gives us Defense Secretary Rubinstein, who kills Arab. <laughs> and to love, which is blooming in such time between my son and Unike, who, big wink to Eunice, will be victorious like Sparta over Athens. <laughs> and to the summer, which is most conducive season to love, although some may say spring. While he went on in his booming voice, the shot glass shaking in his troubled hand, my mother, bored out of her mind, leaned over to me and said, Кстати, у твоей Юнис очень красивые зубы, может быть, ты женишься. By the way, your Юнис has very pretty teeth. Maybe you will marry her. <laughs> I could see Eunice's mind absorbing the basics of my father's speech. Arabs, bad. Jews, good. <laughs> Chinese central banker, possibly okay. America, always number one in his heart while she gauged the intent in my mother's face as she spoke to me in Russian. Eunice's mind moved so quickly through feelings and ideas, but the fear in her face reflected a life rushing by faster than she could make sense of it. The toast finally complete, we dove into the food without reservation, all of us from countries historically strangled by starvation, none of us strangers to salt and brine. Eunice, my mother said, perhaps you can answer for me this question, who is Lenny by profession? I never can figure out he went to NYU Business School, so he is what, businessman? Mama, I said, please, not now, not now. I am talking to Eunice, my mother said. You know, girl talk. <laughs> I'd never seen Eunice's face so serious, even as the tail end of a Baltic sardine disappeared between her glossy lips. Well, then he does, like, very important work, she told my mother. It's, I think, like medicine, like he helps people live forever. <laughs> My father's fist slammed the dining table. Impossible, he cried. It breaks every law of physics and biology for one. For two, it's immoral against God. Two, I would not want such thing. <laughs> work is work, my mother said. If stupid rich American wants to live forever and Lenny makes money, why do you care? <laughs> she waved her hand at my father. Stupid, she said. <laughs> yeah, but how Lenny knows about medicine? My father lit up, brandishing a fork capped by a marinated mushroom. He never studied in high school. What is his weighted average? 86.894. <laughs> My mother waved him off and, and turned to Eunice. So you met Lenny in Italy, she said. Lenny tells us you speak perfect Italian. Eunice blushed some more, like, no, she said, lowering her eyes and cupping her knees. Like, I'm forgetting everything, like the irregular verbs. Lenny spends one year in Italy, my father said. We come to visit him, he speaks nothing. Blah, 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 blah. He moved his body to imitate my walking through the Roman streets while trying to talk to the natives. You are a liar, Boris, my mother said casually. He bought us beautiful tomato in market. He brought down price, three euro. But tomato is so simple, my father said. In Russian, pomidor, in Italian, pomodoro. Even I know such thing. If he maybe negotiate for us cucumber or squash. <laughs> Uh, Shut up already, Boris, my mother said. She readjusted her summer blouse and bored her eyes into mine. Lenny, she said, we see you appear on Apparat Stream, 101 people we need to feel sorry for. <laughs> Why do you do it? Your colleague, he makes fun of you. He says you are fat and stupid and old. You do not have profession and your fuckability rankings are very low. <laughs> Also, he says, you've been demoted at the company for which you work. Papa and I are very sad about your fuckability. <laughs> my father looked away in some shame. While I curled and uncurled my toes beneath the table, I told him so many times not to look at any apparat streams or data about me. I was a private person who read books. I lived in my own little world. Why couldn't they find a better use for their retirement years and this painful scrutiny of their only child? Why did they stalk me with their tomatoes and high school averages and who are you by profession? And then I heard Eunice speak, her straightforward Californian English ringing against the smallness of our house. Like, I told him not to appear in it too, she said. 
and he won't anymore. You won't, right, Lenny? Like, you're so good and smart. Like, why do you need to do it? Exactly, my mother said. Exactly, Eunice. I did not say anything. I leaned back and watched the two women in my life look across a glossy Romanian table, groaning beneath a plastic cover and 20 gallons of mayonnaise and canned fish. <laughs> they were eyeing each other with a placid understanding. Sometimes mothers and girlfriends compete against one another, but that has never been my experience. It is quite easy for two smart women, no matter what the gap in their age and background, to come to a complete agreement about me. <laughs> this child, they seem to be saying to each other, this child still needs to be brought up. Thank you.